Hey guys, it's Mike here. Uh, just wanted to do a little video to cover a new product that I ran across. Uh, it's a gyro. Um, I know a bunch of guys that asked me about putting how do, how do you put a gyro on your plane. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the Bixler plane. Um, specifically, the product is a, um, an orange RX 3-axis flight stabilizer. Um, ran across this thing, got one for my plane and put it on there and I was really surprised at how well it worked. So I'll show you how it works, I'll show you how to set it up and we'll do some flight video. Okay guys, so the way this stabilization system works is it, um, it tries to level your plane for you or it tries to do some corrections for you as it's flying. So if you look at, look at this aileron right here. If you have any sudden movements, like from the wind, it'll make a correction for you. Um, and it works on all three axes. So you'll see the difference in your ailerons, you'll see it in your rudder, and you'll see it in your elevator. So um, I think it's really apparent there on my rudder. You can see it doing the correction. And you can adjust the sensitivity of this so that it works more or, or less. Um, and don't think that you still can't, that you won't be able to control your plane. Your inputs from your transmitter will take uh, precedence over what this thing is doing. So um, you're not sacrificing that. So I would recommend this gyro stabilization system for uh, a beginner or an expert. Um, there's some guys that will say that using the gyro is cheating. Um, but I tell you what, if you're a beginner and it's really windy, this thing is really going to help you out. You need all the help that you can get. So, and another thing that some guys don't realize is that with the wind, sometimes the wind can be constant, and if it's not really changing that much, it's not that hard to fly in it. But then you might get a windy day where you're just getting gusts that come and go, and you just kind of get surprised all of a sudden. This is where something like this system would, would really help you out. This is a something that you can use for several different planes. So you could get one, put it on one plane, and if you don't like it there, you could move it and move it to another one and try it out there. It's also useful if you're doing FPV or um, aerial photography, you know, you have a nice camera on your plane. Uh, this device is really small um, and it's really easy to install. So let's take a look at how this thing is set up. Okay, so this is the stabilizer unit here. Um, you're gonna, when you take a look at this, you can see it's got uh, different servo connections here. These six pins here at the top are for firmware flashing should it become available in the future. If you look at the side of the unit, you can see it's got um, a label on here to tell you what, you, what the pins here mean. Um, and then it's got some uh, gain dials here for the roll, pitch, and yaw for the unit. And then it's got some dip switches down here to control uh, the, full, the normal or reverse. So you can actually switch the direction the thing is moving in. Uh, I actually put some Velcro on the bottom of mine. If you're just testing it out, you could uh, you know, just use just whatever's convenient for you. The other thing that you want to get with your gyro is you want to get some mail-to-mail -mail server leads. These are the ones that I got. I got these from Hobby King in a 10-pack, pretty cheap. Um, you don't need anything very long. Um, these, I think, are about 3 inches. You want to get a flat, um, a small flat tip screwdriver like this one to help um, adjust the gain dials and also flip the dip switches. So, typically you've got your battery hooked into your ESC, right? And then you have your ESC connected into your receiver and your receiver has all the servos connected to it. So with this gyro, what you're doing is you're basically just putting this between your receiver and your servos. So it's going to sit between them and it's going to provide some intelligence for you, uh, some stabilization for you to help keep your plane level. Now let's see how you connect the receiver to your stabilizer and your stabilizer to your gyros. So the first thing you're going to do is just disconnect all of your servos from your receiver. So next you want to take each of your servo leads that you have 
and plug them into the three channels for the aileron, the elevator, and the rudder. Make sure that you have the ground wire plugged into the right spot on your receiver. So now you can see I've got my three servo leads hooked into my receiver. Next you want to take your three leads that you just had hooked onto your receiver and hook those into the gyro. You want to hook them into the input channels here. They'll be yellow. You go from the rudder on your receiver to the rudder on this gyro and you want it next is the elevator on the receiver to the elevator on the gyro and then lastly aileron on the receiver to the aileron on the gyro. One thing you want to make sure you do is that the you have the negative um, on this edge of the connector here. So you'll see my darker wires are usually the negative. Sometimes they're black, sometimes they're brown. Next you need to plug in your servos into your gyro. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my servos for my aileron. So you'll notice I have the Y splitter here um, for your ailerons. Um, if you have a glider like the um, Bixler, you probably have the Y splitter there. Um, so you take that aileron and you plug it into the left aileron connector. Make sure it's the left aileron. On your gyro. And then you want to plug in the elevator servo into the um, output for the elevator and the rudder servo into the output for the rudder. So once you have this hooked up, you'll notice that um, first of all, all of the um, black or the brown, the dark wire should be on the outside of the connector. Even though it's got the sticker on the side, it, the sticker doesn't exactly line up with the pins. Just keep that in mind, but they are in order. You also notice that there's this battery connector here. This allows you to power the gyro separately if you want to. For most case, for most people, you don't have to worry about this. If you, if you do want to do this, you plug in a BEC into this thing. And then for the servo leads coming from your receiver, each one of these servo leads you have to disconnect the middle wire typically the red wire so that you don't send power from your receiver down to your gyro. The other important thing to mention is that your throttle connection that comes from your ESC is still plugged into your receiver. You're not going to plug this into your gyro. It doesn't go through your gyro. Okay so congratulations you successfully hooked up all the wires together. Next I want to talk about the gain dials here on this thing. Um, what you want to do is go ahead and I want you to turn all of the gains all the way up to the maximum. This will make them the most sensitive and you, you're going to use this for testing the gyros. Um, so you want to take your flat screwdriver and stick it in there and you'll notice um, if you move it from all the way uh, counterclockwise to all the way clockwise that it actually goes from holding the gyro up this way it goes from a seven o'clock position all the way to twelve o'clock down to five o'clock seven o'clock position fully counterclockwise is the minimum position and that will give you almost no gyro control. Turning it all the way clockwise to the 5 o'clock position will give you all gyro control. You probably don't want that much but that's what it does. So we're going to go ahead and just turn, turn them all clockwise to that 5 o'clock position so we have the maximum gyro control so we can test this 
out. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but right there I've got all of them in the maximum position. One thing you might want to do is take a small felt tip marker and mark one tip of the connector so that you can see where the maximum position is. So the next thing I want to talk about is where you should mount this thing. Um, you want to mount it as close to the CG as you can in your plane. And on the Bixel plane, um, mounting it down here in the bottom, um, I found works pretty good. Um, you want to make sure that it's nice and straight. Um, it's going to be level. Um, I put some Velcro in the bottom of my plane so it'll stick there. It won't move around. Some guys will put foam underneath theirs so it doesn't get a lot of vibration. Um, and you'll find that um, I actually also wanted to have this so that the gain dials were near the front here so that I could reach in with the screwdriver and easily adjust this. So you might want to do, do that. Now you can mount this. Um, you can turn it and mount it this way too if you want to. Um, there's some adjustment that you have to do a little bit later where you can you might have to um, reverse some of the channels using those dip switches but I'll show you how to do that. One thing you want to make sure you do when you plug in your battery uh, you want to make sure you're holding your gyro and your plane everything perfectly still and level. So I'm going to plug it in I'm going to get it still and straight and level Keep it, and that gets your uh, reset your gyro. You want to do that every time you plug in your battery. Okay, so you notice I have my gyro outside of the uh, canopy here, just so I can work on it a little bit. And I'm going to show you some things. Um, I'm going to show you how to set it up um, and make sure that everything is moving in the right directions. So what you want to do to test this thing out is you want to make some sudden movements with your gyro as if it was inside the plane and see if the plane responds properly. So if I make a sudden movement to the right with my gyro, I should see my right aileron pop down. Let's watch this. So when the gyro moves to the right, you should see that right aileron jump down. Likewise, the left one, when I move to the left, you should see the left one jump down. For the elevator, if you have a, if you move the front of the gyro down real fast, you should see the elevator pop up. For the rudder, if you move the um, if you turn the gyro to the left, you should see the rudder move to the right. And you can see on my rudder, I have this big uh, gift card on the end of my rudder so it really stands out. Helps give me some extra authority. Now, when if now I want to show you what happens if you um, plug in your gyro and you see one of the control surfaces just really goes in the opposite direction. Chances are it's actually um, reversed. The channel, the gyro is actually reversing it. What you want to do is, um, there's a, if you look at my elevator, you can see how it's really popped up. Um, so what you want to do is flip the dip switch on your gyro for the elevator. Take your little small screwdriver or small point and flip the dip switch for the elevator and you'll see it go back to normal. The other thing that you might need to do is um, you might have to switch, reverse the channel on your radio. Um, I found that that, that, uh, that worked also. Okay, so I'm going to put my gyro inside the canopy right near the center of gravity, nice and level and straight. Testing worked out great. Um, make sure you do the testing. Don't skip that or otherwise you could have a wreck.
before you put the gyro in the plane, what you want to do is check, change all the dials in your gyro and move them all the way counterclockwise to the minimum position. And you're going to fly with that, which is no gyro gain, no sensitivity. So if you if you notice when I flip it, it barely even moves next to nothing when I move the gyro around. So you're going to start with that setting, you're going to fly with it, and then you're going to make small adjustments, slowly turning it clockwise. Some guys will start out with say 50% and start with that. You know, you could do that if you want to. Um, that would be at the 12 o'clock position. One note I've read is that as you move clockwise from, from the 12 o'clock to the 5 o'clock position, it dramatically increases the sensitivity. Whereas from the 7 o'clock position to the 12 o'clock position, it's really not that sensitive. So let's go ahead and put this thing inside the plane near the CG and give it some flights and test it out.